Hey, this is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. I want to show you kind of a cool little trick because right now After Effects, all it can do is extrude just a shape layer or just a text layer. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with it, but one thing you can't do is texture it. And I'm going to show you just a little trick and it has its limitations, but we're going to texture this front face of this logo and be able to rotate it and edit it normally. So here's how we do it. Here's my comp. I'm going to call this Ray Trace Comp. And if you're like, what are you doing? What are all these layers? Look at my last tutorial. It's just a couple minutes long and it picks up at the end. But basically, all this is is there's a shape layer that's extruded and there's a light in the scene. And that's, that's all I've done. So I'm going to call this Ray Trace Comp. And I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command D or Control D on a PC and rename it Classic. Comp or Classock Comp. That's good too. And so in my Classock Comp, I'm going to go up to my renderer and I'm going to hit Classic 3D. And so now, guess what? All of this cool extrusion gets thrown away. But that's okay because that's part of our trick. So now I'm going to import a texture. So here's a nice concrete texture, and I'm going to make sure I don't hit JPEG sequence. Just import this New York Concrete 5. And I'm going to drag this into my classic comp. And I'm going to make it a 3D layer. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to select my shape layer and I'm going to hit P and then hold shift and hit S and R. Because I want to bring up the position, scale, and rotation information for this layer. And I'm going to select this all and hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And so all I've done is pretty much aligned this texture layer in 3D space with this shape layer. And now I'm just going to scale this down because this texture layer doesn't need to be quite as big as it is. And so that looks pretty good. And I'm going to set my light, which is currently colored blue, to be white. And I'll show you why in a second. So that's a white light. And then I'm going to set this texture layers track mat to alpha mat. And so that basically makes a texture for the front face of this comp. So you can see where I'm going with this. And so now I'm going to take this comp and I'm going to drag this tab and it's going to ask me where I want to put this tab. And I'm just going to select the upper part of my timeline and now it makes two timelines. And this is why I'm doing this. It's so that I can do some really tricky things here. I'm going to go in my ray trace comp, select my shape layer, and I'm going to do the PSR thing again. And so now I've brought up my position, scale, and rotation information for my shape layer in both my classic comp and my ray trace comp. So now what I'm going to do is make sure that anything that I do in this comp also happens in this comp at the same time. And so I'm going to, so I'm going to go to my classic comp and I'm going to hold down alt and click my stopwatch for the position. And I'm going to take my pick whip here and just move it over to the position of my ray trace comp, just like that. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing for scale and the same thing for orientation. Okay, and so I'm going to do the same thing for my rotation, each one of these rotation things. Just alt click on the stopwatch, pick whip to the same thing. And so now, if I move this Z position to 500, it also moves to 500 in my classic comp. So that's what I want. So now basically, I have this shape layer doing the same thing that this shape layer does. I'm also going to take my texture layer and parent it to my shape layer so that the texture does everything that that shape layer does. So now I can close my classic comp and then I'm going to take my classic comp from my project window and drag it to the top layer of my ray trace comp. And here's the tricky part. This classic comp, remember, uses the classic 3D renderer. And the reason I have to do this in classic 3D is because you can't 
do a track mat in the new ray trace 3D renderer. It doesn't work. So in my ray trace comp, I'm just nesting this classic comp and using it as a 2D layer that overlays everything that's happening in 3D space. So I'm going to go to this 2D layer and I'm going to go to its track mode and I'm going to select multiply. And so now it's going to get rid of all those white pixels and just keep the dark pixels and basically texture that front face. And I'll give you a good look here. So now I have my front face textured and it looks good. But here's the cool part. I'm going to bring this back down to quarter resolution again. I'm going to lock my classic comp and my light just to be safe. Now I can rotate this layer and it will still work out. So I can do anything I want to this shape layer and because the duplicate shape layer inside this classic comp is doing the exact same thing, it works out and the perspective works and everything like that and you end up with a textured front face. Also remember, anything you want to change in this comp, you'll probably have to link up to the other comp, because if I move this light around, it's not linked to the light in this comp, because remember there is a light that's lighting this face in my classic comp. These lights aren't linked, so if I move this light all the way over, it's not necessarily going to work out just right. There should be a little bit more darkness and the shading should work a little better on this, but it doesn't because this light isn't linked up. So make sure you do that if you're going to be changing your lighting. But that's pretty much all there is to it. I think it's a pretty cool way of doing it. And uh, yeah, tell me what you think. And I'd like to see stuff that you made with it as well. So anyway, once again, my name is Casey Ferris with RambaDesignTools.com and thanks for watching.